Welcome to Moxie Bets, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. I'm Katie Mox, and coming up on today's show, it was an exciting Sunday for week one in the NFL. We'll recap some of our favorite and not so favorite moments. Russell Wilson, he returns to Seattle tonight to face his former team. What are we expecting from his revenge game? Hopefully a little bit better than Baker Mayfield's. And of course, I will give you my Mox Locks. But first things first, let's bring in Danny Brasco. Danny. Uh, the wedding season is finally over for you. Congratulations. How was your weekend? It was fantastic. Yeah, another one. The wedding circuit ends, but uh, my liver is thankful. But wow, I mean, after I got home, I told myself I'm watching football until my eyes bleed and my eyes aren't even upset yeah. at me. What a week one. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a week one. So let's just start talking about it. Let's get into Mox Thoughts right now and recap some of the biggest games on Sunday. This one was probably the game of the week, the game of the year. I don't know. Bengals versus the Steelers. 23 to 20. Steelers win this game. Burrow did not look good, Danny. He threw his first his first throw, I believe, was a pick six. And then he had a lot of turnovers. And so much for that improved O-line because he got sacked four times. TJ Watt tore his pectoral muscle. Najee Harris tore his ACL. Not good for the Steelers. And then, you know, with two seconds left, Burrow throws to Chase. What an incredible throw that was. Going to go tie the game. And then the kickers. The kickers just... I don't know what's happening in the NFL with kickers, but what did you think of this game? We both were on the Steelers plus the six and a half. You kind of said that you thought they might win outright, and uh, what a game. I mean, yeah, we were talking about Tomlin as such a profitable underdog coach, so we had to take the points there. Closed at seven. People kept betting on the Bengals, so I took it again. And it was an insane game. You mentioned the field goal misses, all the mishaps. Finally, the Bengals with a chance to win the game. And Minka Fitzpatrick not only took a pick six to the house in the beginning of the game, but blocks the extra point to save it. So absolutely just amazing, nutty game. The Bengals didn't challenge that Jamar Chase touchdown catch. It looked like his foot actually might have been in. Such a weird yeah. one. And, uh, of course, the Steelers are always in these games that end up being ties or near ties. They somehow pull it off. And, yeah, that was a wild one. I'm glad we had the points in that one, Katie. I would say Mitch Trubisky didn't look that bad. Um, and I thought Burrow really had a Super Bowl hangover. I was surprised with how many interceptions he threw, the pick six to pick six to start things off. And then um, and then the injuries on the Steelers, though, to lose TJ Watt is gonna be huge. To lose Najee Harris is gonna be huge. So even though they come away with this really big win here, there's a lot of question marks for me and the Steelers moving forward. Uh, and obviously defensive player of the year is now wide open with TJ out for the season. They just lost their best player on defense and their best player on offense. It's tough to go forward from that, you know? It is. All right, let's talk about the Sunday night game. The Bucks versus the Cowboys, 19 and 3. Obviously, Dak Prescott injured, broke his thumb. He got hit twice. He's expected to miss six to eight weeks. He's going to have surgery. Is the season over for Dallas? Does Jimmy G go there? Micah Parson, he was a beast. He had two sacks, uh, two separate drives back to back. Chris Godwin, <sighs> That was a bummer, Danny. Do you think he came back too early? Now he might be out for the rest of the season too. So I don't know. What do you think of this game? I thought Julio Jones looked amazing. He did. He's on the TB12 program. He looks good. So him and Brady are going to be successful together. Um, Yeah, Godwin, I told everybody in fantasy leagues, I don't like drafting guys coming off ACL injuries. It's a stay away from me. And, uh, you know, he went down immediately. Uh, The Cowboys, you called them when you opened this uh, segment. I'm just confused because I thought their name was the Cow Frauds. Every year, Katie, every year. It gives me great joy as a Giants fan. So, yeah, I don't want to see Dak get hurt. I want to see the great players play in the NFL, and that's a bummer. But, I mean, once again, what do we expect? Exactly how we wanted to expect it to go. We cash the Bucks minus two and a half, cash the under two. Light work. Yeah, I mean, obviously we don't want to see Dak Prescott get injured. I'm curious what they're going to do at quarterback now. He's going to be out six to eight weeks. I don't think that they make a play for Jimmy G. I think maybe they make a play for somebody else, like maybe some kind of second string quarterback. But it's 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 a bummer for him. But as far as the Cowboys are, I had the over in that game. I definitely thought that this was going to go over those two offenses and. Dallas did nothing, did absolutely nothing. And it's not like he got injured in the beginning of the game. Yeah, and the, it's the offensive line, obviously, that had the, the you know the serious concerns. We talked about that in, in an earlier episode when we were bringing up the Cowboys and how they might fare this season. Like when they were at their best, you couldn't move them off the line. Zach Martin and Connor McGovern, and they were monsters in there, monsters. Yep. And so Zeke was the beneficiary of that. Of course, Zeke and Pollard was always a good dual threat in the backfield. But now when though when that fortified line crumbles a little bit and and, and you know guys get injured or go elsewhere in offseason, you got to rebuild that. The team loses its identity, and the offense shows putting up a big, fat three points. 
Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the Patriots and the Dolphins. This one was a hard one for me because I definitely thought the Patriots were going to come up big here. You believed a little bit more in the Dolphins. Patriots 7, Dolphins 20, Mac Jones uh, 31 for 30, or excuse me, 30 for 31, threw for 213 yards. He had that questionable throw to Devontae Parker that resulted in a pick six. Pick six. The O line here, I think, is the most concerning thing. He was sacked twice, including that strip sack. Tua actually looked decent, you know, but the only touchdown in the game was to Waddle. What do you think? Yeah, I, it's just like these teams that don't have the firepower on offense, I don't know how they're going to make it happen this year. Belichick is the wizard. I don't have to tell you that, and everyone knows it. It's just you need chess pieces to play the game, right? And and Mike yeah. McDaniel's got a nice new arsenal in, in Miami, and I like the way he called that game. 20-7, to 7, it wasn't the most attractive one, but the Patriots weren't that competitive in the game at all. It never felt like they yeah. were really, you know, had a shot to, to overtake the Dolphins at any moment. So it was just like a defeatist week one for uh, for the Pats, and I don't, I'm not seeing that high of a ceiling for them. Yeah, I mean, I definitely thought that uh, – that- that he was going to get out coached in this one. And Mike McDaniel surprised, he surprised me. And he had some gutsy uh, play calling there. And speaking of gutsy play calling, how about those Giants going into Tennessee, beating the Titans 21 to 20, Dable going for two, and Barkley. It's the return of Saquon Barkley. He led the league in yards yesterday and fantasy points. As a Jet, you told me on Friday I could have the Giants. You're like, my Giants? <laughs> how do you feel about it now? They're my Giants again. I want them back, baby. <laughs> I want them back. Wow. What a win. We had, when's the last time we won a season opener? It's been forever. And they came yeah. out anemic to start the game. Same old Giants. First half was pitiful. Pitiful. And all of a sudden, Daniel Jones had a really good second half. Saquon put the team on his back. Dayball makes a yeah. bold call to go for two. If he misses that, Katie, the New York media is roasting him. Roasting him. Yep. And, uh, you know and then, what? I love, I love that he went for it. Yeah. You have to, right? Joe Judge and Ben McAdoo, yawn. Make a name for yourself. So I, I love to see it. And uh, I was actually watching another uh, Omaha Productions ESPN show, uh, Kyle Brandt's Basement, and he's talking about mm. – he's so funny. And he comes out talking about Randy Bullock trots out for the 47-yard field goal. He goes, they should have trotted Sandra Bullock out there. He shanked <laughs> it left, <laughs> and he misses a gross field goal, and we get our, our first season opener win in what feels like since the freaking Mesozoic era. Let's go, Giants! Well, I also think that Dable going for two, what he's saying to his team is, I trust you. Let's go out there and win this game. And someone like Joe Judge di clearly didn't trust the team at all and would never make those kind of gutsy moves. So I feel like this is a really big statement win um, to set the tone for the season for the Giants. Now, I don't think you guys are going to go undefeated by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it builds that confidence in the in the locker room again. So I'm excited to see what's on deck for game two for you guys. And me and all my buddies in the Giants group chat talk, Saquon looks like this. If they Daniel Jones can make, I was immediately text us, guys, that was amazing. That was a fluke, but it was amazing. So let's enjoy it and not get, you know, over overexcited about what's to come next. But you got to love it. Big blue, baby. Big blue, baby. All right. So in a positive potential overreaction, let's talk about an overreaction for the worst game that happened. The Niners and the Bears. Niners 10, Bears 19. We were shutting them out in the first half. I like to call this a monsoon misery because it was just a complete collapse of the 49ers in the second half. We gave them this game. Their offense couldn't even move down the field. Now, I want, I'm not going to take it away from Justin Field. He had a couple really, really great throws, and he was able to play in the monsoon, which Trey Lance was not. I don't want to get too far down on Trey Lance because he played as you would expect him to play his first time as a starting quarterback. Now, he did play in a couple games last year, but his first time really as a starter, all of that pressure, and then to be in a monsoon. He didn't look like he trusted himself. He definitely made a lot of mistakes, so I don't want to get too hard on it. Him. But what's frustrating is that you see Jimmy Garoppolo on the sideline, and that's a guy that you know that you can trust in these games. And you can't tell me that the offense wouldn't be more efficient with Jimmy Garoppolo in this monsoon than Trey Lance. So it's just frustrating to watch this rookie have very normal rookie struggles and then to have a veteran on the sideline who could – I'm not saying Jimmy Garoppolo wins that game because I think that we – you know, we beat ourselves in that game with all of the terrible penalties. Trent Williams had two false starts. We just kept giving them 15 yards over and over and over again. But – it would have been better. It would have been more efficient. And, you know, it's possible that we get out a win. But I, need it was, to be it a, was I need to be Jimmy Garoppolo's agent because you, you're just like you could advocate anything for this guy. Uh, but honestly, <laughs> it's good that they kept him because, yeah, they might look to rely on him. Obviously, uh, 
yeah, it was not an easy environment to play in. And I agree, they beat themselves. But I got to take credit for, or I got to give myself a demerit for something I got wrong. I was talking about how Soldier Field is no longer a scary place to play. Uh, it was the hardest place to play all Sunday, and it contributed very much to a big upset win for the Bears. So, yeah, strike that one. Well, that was, yeah, half it. And so you got it. The weather was something, right? The second half, and you saw they were like shoveling off water before to start the game. So, the weather wow. has some things to do with it. There were some penalties where I'm like, what could they do there? You're slipping and sliding into it. But, uh, yeah, it was an absolutely miserable game for me to watch. Uh, another interesting game, which you were really high on the Vikings. Um, I was on the Packers, and you were right. Packers 7, Vikings 23. The Packers defense just leaving Justin Jefferson wide open left and right was just absolutely unbelievable to me. It's like, you don't think you got to cover that guy? We're not trying to double team that guy? Why is Justin Jefferson always open? And Rodgers... Rodgers getting hit all day, so there's that. I think he got sacked, what, four times? Nobody could get open for him. He had that perfect pass, perfect pass to Christian Watson. Dime. And he drops it. Oh, Dime. and you could see the daggers. You could see the daggers. And I wouldn't want to be Christian Watson. You know that he got reamed in that. And and you can't drop those. You can't drop those. But it was um, it was a tough day for the Packers. But I but you know, Aaron Rodgers hasn't played in preseason for 3 years. He's gone back to back years now without throwing a touchdown pass in the first game. So, I don't know, Rodgers, maybe you should play in preseason. And we were talking about all those trends how good he is in the opening of the year, uh but the last 2 years, exactly, he's done quite poorly. The Saints decimated the Packers to open the year last year. And again, life after DeVonte Adams was the narrative that we were going for and, and here here it comes, Christian Watson you know, dime through the hands. It's going to, the growing pains with the new receivers is going to be expected. But yes, the offensive line was the real concern. Rodgers was getting battered around all day, made the Vikings defense look like an elite unit, which they definitely look improved. But man, it was more that the Packers had nothing to give on offense. Just like I said in the Patriots Dolphins game, this one's the same. The Packers were never in this game. And Justin Jefferson immediately making his campaign to be the best receiver in the league, as we expected. Oh. It starts in week yep. one. So. Yeah, I'm going to stick to it. And obviously, this is a good week to, you know, to bolster the argument. But I called the Vikings winning this division. And here we go. Statement game in week one. Yeah, statement. I'm not I'm not sold on the Packers being completely out of this yet, because like you said, last year, they lost that game, got totally manhandled, and then it came back and still won the division and, you know, still went pretty deep into the playoffs, except for getting knocked out by the Niners. But it was interesting if you were watching Red Zone, too, because Watson drops the pass, and then like three seconds later, you see Devontae Adams just catch an absolute dime. And, uh, you know, to see the contrast there, and you know you know that Aaron Rodgers is missing his uh, wide receiver one there. It's a tough look for Ayahuasca. It's a tough look for Ayahuasca. You know, he was saying he loves the game again. And uh, I don't know. He didn't look like he was enjoying himself too much. Traditional football training camp methods one, Ayahuasca zero. <laughs> Yes, yes. Okay, let's go to this uh, really exciting divisional matchup, the Raiders and the Chargers. Raiders 19, Chargers 24. This was a great game, and it was everything that we thought we were going to get from uh, from Justin Herbert. It was Her Herbie fully loaded. The Raiders played well, but I think that the Chargers were just a better team. Herbert was not sacked at all. You want to talk about this Chargers defense adding Khalil Mack? They got to the quarterback six times, five for Carr, one for Adams. Khalil Mack had three sacks on his own. Like this defense was just scary. And I think it's going to be the big difference for them. What'd you think? And I'm expecting a big year from Derek Carr. In week one, they were in his head. I mean, he was he was connecting with Devontae for sure. And they had, you know, you look at the box score, there's some nice stats there. But, you know, he under threw him. Yeah. Yeah, he threw three picks. I mean, he underthrew him bad on one of those where he probably, if he threw if he threw a deep ball correctly, would have been another touchdown. So the pressure that you mentioned they brought on him. And just like, you know, the scheming that the Chargers brought, that defense looks really serious. So I was yeah. impressed by them. They covered your minus three. I wasn't able to hit the over, but but more than anything, I was impressed with the Chargers defense in that game. Oh, yeah, six sacks. I mean, that was crazy. Okay, let's move on to the Baker Mayfield Revenge game, uh, Browns 26 and the Panthers 24. It did not start out well for Baker Mayfield in that game at all. And if you watch the post game, he was like, everyone made it like this. This was the Super Bowl. It's like, bro, this was your Super Bowl. And if you had won this game, then you wouldn't be saying these kind of things. But he's always been a little bit salty um, in oh, pressers yeah. after a loss. 
But the Browns, I mean, they had a lead 20 to 7 going into the fourth quarter. And then somehow that, you know, they were able to get back. Panthers were then leading 24 23. Chubb had a great game, 147 rush yards. Kareem Hunt had a great game. He found the end zone twice. Ultimately, it just wasn't in the card, cards for the Panthers. But I did think, you know, they, they came back a little bit, but the, the Browns look good. Yeah, and this line was crazy where the Panthers were like plus four and a half. Then they went to like minus one. Then Christian McCaffrey was on the injured list. Then he ended up playing. Like it was a nutty game, which is why I ended up passing on it. And sometimes you look at a game and the best move is to not bet on something on the board, even though you look at all your wins or your losses or all your bets. And sometimes the pass is what you're most uh, proud of. I'm thrilled that I passed on that game. It was a wild one. Wild, wild one. Okay, let's get in now to Capper's Corner. Moxie Bets is presented for the people by Caesar Sportsbook, the greatest sports betting app of all time. Download it. Must be 21 or older. Lions, Tigers, and tailgates. Oh my, the college football season is always a great time of year. Besides the jerseys, the face paint, and the foam fingers, there's the food. And nothing gets you more fired up for game day than Eckridge Smoked Sausage. They're naturally hardwood smoked and have the perfect blend of spices. From buffalo sausage dip to sausage chili mac and cheese, Eckridge Smoked Sausage is a quick way to bring flavor to all your tailgate meals. Visit Eckridge.com for easy, one-of-a-kind sausage recipes. Eckridge, you do you. Okay, we have another revenge game on our hands, and this time it's Russell Wilson as he makes his return to Seattle against the 12th man. And Danny, this is interesting because for the Broncos to cover the spread, it's at even money on Caesar Sportsbook. Seattle minus 120 to cover against the spread over under at 44. This opened at 41. That's a little suspicious to me because it's something crazy like 70 something percent of the money right now is on the Broncos. 73 percent of all picks are on the Broncos. But you're going to give us that now at even money. Something feels weird to me about this what do you think of this game yeah i agree the line is sketchy and i'm staying off it um i see a lot of sharp money on the seahawks and and i get that um i'm not i'm not high enough on the broncos in week one to take to lay seven on them and uh and the seahawks might end up being one of the worst teams in the nfl yet anything is possible in any given week so i'm going to look towards the total instead with all that sketchy action happening on the spread and i gave you guys the under actually much earlier in the week at 45 it's down to 44 44 and a half keeps dropping and I'm just expecting defense to be the story in this game and offenses that come out lacking some of that moxie, if you will. Uh, I, I yes. just think that, you know, the, the offensive line issues uh, for both teams might rear their head. There's a lot of new personnel on, on both of those uh, sides of the ball. And I don't think Russell Wilson is just going to have this storybook beginning to the season. I mean, no. Pete Carroll knows how to coach against him. And he's got a lot of new pieces to figure out. Look for the run game to be the focus. And that should choose oh, yeah. some clock. And I think this one stays low. It's a, it's a low total, too. I like when the public sees a low total. 44 points. Yeah, of course, at the NFL. Touchdowns are worth six. So everyone keeps, you know, betting these overs. But I'm someone that keys in on low, ugly totals like that and usually look for an under. I'm passing on this game. I do think that the Broncos get the win here. And they could it could be by seven. I don't know. You know, Seahawks used to be a shoe-in for week one. They're nine and one straight up, six and four against the spread in home openers. But that was, of course, under under Russell Wilson. He's no longer there anymore. There's some injury concerns on the Seahawks. You got who is who is starting today? Is it Drew Locke or is it Geno Smith? Geno, it's Geno, baby. Geno Smith. All right, Gino, baby. So I, a lot of question marks in this one. I'm staying away from it. I would lean Broncos, but seven points is a lot, and there is a lot of fishy things going on there with 73% of tickets on that, and then they're giving you plus money. It's a little bit strange. On the road, but, nine but, and seven, gross. It's Yeah, it's, it's gross. Okay, so let's get into some uh, prop bets for this game. So the first touchdown scorer – Let's see. We got Rashad Penny. He's at plus 480. Javante Williams, plus 625. Cortland Sutton, plus 750. Jerry Judy, plus 850. DK Metcalf at plus 950. These are always a fun one to sprinkle. It's like you never know exactly what's going to happen here, but wh- what would be your lean? So, you know, sometimes you give real sharp takes and, and you go through the stats and the angles, and we crushed it in week one so far. For first touchdown scores, like you said, these are fun. Sometimes you got to find a little luck, sprinkle in a little, you know, what's in my life? Yep. What are the signs, right? Like a roulette number. <laughs> Katie, I'm going on a date with this girl who needs Jerry Judy to go off for her fantasy team to win week one. She's going to be in a much wow. better mood if, her, if she beats her best friend in fantasy. So we're going with Jerry Judy, who she needs to pop off plus 850 to score the first touchdown. There you have it. That's it. Uh, 
Danny, I'm a team player and I want you to be happy. So I'm going to go with Jerry Judy as well and and hope this happens for you. And, and plus, you got to tell me about this chick you're dating. Um, I feel like you're holding out on me a little bit. All right, moving on. We're going to talk about total passing touchdowns. Russell Wilson, over one and a half, minus 133. That seems like a lock to me, under at minus 103. And then Geno Smith, over one and a half, plus 165. The under, minus 234. What do you think? I mean, just taking a look at the odds alone, I kind of want to take Geno's over for the plus money, but I don't have the balls to do it. So I don't really love any of these. I mean, we're looking at a really low total, and you're asking me to bet on an over under of TD passes. They juiced Geno's under so badly <laughs> that you oh. can't even try to bet on oh. a fade. Of, it's it's an unbettable, yeah. Katie. Like, what, what are you supposed to do? And he could I easily get two, right? Yeah. No, nah, hell no. But. I'll pass and I'll lean towards your Wilson over one and a half just to say, hey, maybe some of the narrative comes true and he has like a decent game, but I don't want any part of these TD passing props. I, I love Wilson. I think this is a lot. This is one of my bets uh, for later tonight, too. He averaged over this mark in 2021, 1.79 passing touchdowns per game. That's not even like a real number. I don't know how we get that. But I also thought that Pete Carroll had more of a run first offense. That was kind of his scheme last year. So I think that Russell Wilson is going to be airing it out a lot more tonight. He's got a lot of good receivers here. It seems like more of a passing offense. So I like him to get the one and a half. I'm interested to see how he does against the 12th man because I think they're going to be out and be extremely loud tonight. He's going to get that warm welcome. They're going to be happy to see him. And then they're going to be like, yo, this is what it's like to play against us. And this is this is a fan base that has really affected offenses. And so I'm curious to see how he does. That said, I do think that he's going to get over one and a half. That is to me let, let, all day. Let's go. Let's talk total passing yards. I have a different take on total passing yards. I know I said I think that Russell Wilson's going to get over one and a half. I'm going to take him under his passing yards. This is at 253 and a half. That's at minus 117. Uh, Russell Wilson, I'm going to take the under in his passing yards today, which is interesting because I just said I think he's going to get over one and a half passing touchdowns. I could see a lot of short little passes there. In terms of yards, I kind of think he's going to have trouble against this uh, 12th man. So I'm going to take him under the 253 and a half. He actually averages well under this mark as well. I believe it's at 234 and a half. So to have him go up the 20 yards, I don't see it happening tonight. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, they're going to lean on the run. I'm more interested in guys like Javante Williams tonight, the running back for the Denver Broncos. Uh, I don't think that they're just going to air it out in week one. He's got to build chemistry with Judy and Sutton and all the guys there. And yeah, 12th man is in effect. Carroll knows how to scheme against him. I think it would be foolish to just try to air it out and throw bombs, you know, uh, like he did to oh, DK yeah. and Lockett last season, right? It, it could yeah. happen certainly this year, but don't expect him to be that aggressive out of the gate. New coaches as well on the, on the Denver Broncos with Nathaniel Hackett. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a little more conservative and he stays under this number. Let Russ cook. You think it's going to be more of like a sous chef tonight than the, <laughs> I love, than the, let the Russ, main chef uh, let in, Russ, in the kitchen? Let Russ monitor the crock pot. Let, let Russ make an appetizer. Let Russ make an appetizer. Also, Geno Smith under on this one. He's at 209 and a half. Like, I have zero faith. But you know what? There were people that I had zero faith in and like the Bears. I had zero faith in the Bears and look what they did. So hard to say. Week one is when you finally see what everybody's going to be. But I would definitely go under on Geno Smith as well, under 209 and a half. Let Russ bring a, a side dish to the potluck. <laughs> I love that, actually. Okay, so let's move on and talk total rushing yards. You got Rashad Penny. He's at 71 and a half. Geno Smith, over nine and a half. Russell Wilson, 12 and a half. Javante Williams, 57 and a half. And Melvin Gordon, the third, is at 37 and a half. What do you like here? So look at the lowest total out of those that you mentioned. It's the starting quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks, Geno Smith, at nine and a half yards. And that's probably going to be the least paid attention to one, but that's easily my favorite one. Just for the likeliness of broken plays, right? A, a brand yeah. new, I mean, Geno played with them a little bit last year. He started four games and he actually rushed for over this number in two of those. But, you know, it's a new year and Geno's going to get, you know, a, a lot of new things to figure out. So there's two new starting tackles, uh, rookies on the, this offensive line. One of them is Charles Cross. 
one of the top draft picks of the league. But I don't expect the line to just jail immediately, and they're playing a really tough one in Bradley Chubb and all those names on the defensive line. Watch for him to be under crazy pressure and have to use his legs to scramble out of it. A couple broken plays and Geno rushes five, six yards and you're cashing this. So yeah. for people who haven't ever yeah. bet on a quarterback rush yards prop, when they get sacked, it does not count against your rush yard. So you don't have to worry about right. that. And I think Gino gets sacked plenty, but he'll escape a few and cash this for you. I do think that that's a very good bet. And you give very sound uh, analysis there. I'm going to go here with Melvin Gordon over his yards. And I kind of like him for an anytime touchdown as well, if you want to sprinkle a little bit on that. So he's probably going to split carries with Javante Williams. They're not lacking in running backs in this game. I do think that Melvin Gordon is going to get a majority, maybe about like 60, 40 of the carries. And if you look at Seattle, this is a team that allowed 95 rush yards per game to opposing running backs. They also allowed 14 touchdowns last year to running backs. So I kind of like him for an anytime touchdown, but I'm definitely going to take him um, over on the yards. I could see them bringing him in at the goal line as like a third down power back and punching one in. So I kind of yeah. like that anytime TD. Yeah. All right, let's talk total receiving yards. You got Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Javante Williams, a lot of good receivers here. You got Lockett, you got Metcalf. Uh, what do you like for this one? I'm actually going to look at the running back you alluded to is Javante Williams here. His, again, super low total of 15 and a half yards. But for similar reasons that I brought up about broken plays and Geno Smith, I think the same about Russell Wilson in a new offense, right? What, are the, what is a new quarterback maybe going to look to do when things don't go his way on a certain play? Read one, not there. Read one, two, not there. Uh, check down. And Javante Williams is a nice check down back. He's not known as a big receiving back, but he's got a few games last year, more than a few. He's got eight where he went over this total. And he's got two, three, four catches almost every single week last year. So with a new quarterback, maybe looking for some safety plays, if the pocket breaks down, I can see a few check downs, 15 and a half yards. That's two, three catches for Javante. Make a couple guys miss and cash this for us. So I really like that one. I like that too. I'm going to take Cortland uh, Sutton on this one. He's at 61 and a half. That's at minus 137. When I look at Sutton in the 2019 season, he was selected for the Pro Bowl. He had over a thousand yards. He had six touchdowns. And who were his quarterbacks? Joe Flacco, Drew Locke, Brandon Allen. Now he's got Russell Wilson. So I feel like he's going to be a, not, not necessarily a sleeper because he is a good wide receiver, but I think he's going to get a lot of touches in this game. So I like him to go over. All right, let's talk about some Caesars Sportsbook odds boost. These ones are not always likely, but you get some really good odds on them. You've got Geno Smith over 249 and a half pass yards and over one and a half passing touchdowns. That's at plus 475. Rashad Penny and Jerry Judy each to score a touchdown. That's at plus 475. Javante Williams over 99 and a half rushing yards and a touchdown, plus 750. And then you got DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett each to score a touchdown at plus 1200. Uh, for me, if I'm looking at this, um, <laughs> I would probably lean on Rashad, Penny, and Jerry Judy each to have a touchdown. But if I'm going to do an odds boost, I feel like I want to go the plus 1200 and I'm going to go for DK Metcalf and Taylor, uh, excuse me, Tyler Lockett to each score uh, a touchdown. I think they are going to be airing out the ball a little bit more. They've had some injuries with their running back. So even though Pete Carroll likes to scheme a little bit more on the run side, I do feel like they're going to be throwing the ball a little bit more. So uh, I don't know, plus 1200. Go. I mean, Metcalf it's an odds boost. Yeah, you got to have some fun with it. Plus 1,200. I'm going to go one tier down from you and take the plus 750 in Javante yeah. Williams to score and go for 100 yards. The other ones require two people to do something. This one is a big game from Javante Williams, and I get plus 750. So I'll take that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Football season is here and nothing beats seeing your favorite team live. Not only does Vivid Seats have great NFL ticket prices, they're also the official ticketing partner of ESPN. And with Vivid Seats rewards, when you buy 10 tickets, you get the 11th free. Download the app or visit vividseats.com today. Vivid Seats, life happens live. Receive a reward credit equal to the average price of 10 tickets purchased, excluding taxes, fees, and processing costs. See vividseats.com slash rewards for terms terms and conditions. All right, now let's get into some mocks locks. We may have given them to you earlier in the show. We may have new ones. Who knows? I'm going to take Tyler Lockett over three and a half receptions tonight. It's a little bit juicy. It's at minus 163, so maybe throw it in a parlay. But Hawks running back Kenneth Walker has been hurt, which leaves Rashad Penny is really the only true running back that they have in this game. I think it's going to be tough to get their ground game going. It's going to be a little bit more pass heavy. Lockett, their number one receiver, I think is going to get the most receptions over three and a half. Let's go. What's the your low first total. Pick? You gotta hit. He's gotta have four or five catches tonight. So yeah, super like low, that. super low. Yeah, 
So I brought it up before, but I'm taking that Gino over nine and a half rush yards. It's such a low total, yeah. and I love lines like this. I got them on all sorts of QBs that I don't trust their offensive line, and I know they got to you know make something up on the spot and, and get 10 yards to pick up a first down. That's exactly how I see it happening. Gino's done it before last season. Don't be surprised if he plays a little above expectations, too. He's an athlete. He can do something. I'm not a Gino believer by any means, but I think he surprises us on a couple plays. So give me that to happen, and Gino to have over nine and a half rushing yards. I love it. I love it. And I'm going to go for my next mox lock is Wilson over one and a half passing touchdowns. I think they're going to be short little passes. He's going to bring an appetizer. It's at minus 133. But I do think that he's going to have at least two passing touchdowns. Let Russ make an appetizer. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think for your second pick? So for my second one, I'm going to rock with Javante Williams, who I've been talking about on this show. And I think the focus is on the ground game. And to Javante, I think he's their best back. Um, and Russell Wilson's going to need to use someone that's familiar with the offense to start things out. So whether it's check down uh, little throws or they just hand him the ball a bunch of times, I think Javante Williams will have over 79 and a half rushing plus receiving yards mm. as a dual threat Ooh. back. Okay. I like that one a lot. All right, first Monday night football game of the season. It's going to be a fun one. Danny, thank you so much for coming on the show. We will see you next Monday. This has been Moxie Bets presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Don't forget to follow us on social at Moxie Bets.